Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Gaming with Charlie. Today we're gonna go over goofy ah, integration techniques in calculus. Part one. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Okay, so pre some prerequisites to this video, I would assume you already know and have experience with basic concepts in pre-calculus, um, <laughs> and some introductory concepts in calculus, such as differentiation and derivatives, like, Ooh. just the basics of derivatives and stuff. Oh yeah, there's also a lot of goofy ah memes in this video, so, yeah. <laughs> so, let's first go over what is an integral. Now the fundamental theorem of calculus states that an integral is the opposite of a derivative. In other words, they're antiderivatives. They do the opposite of what derivatives do. <laughs> so you can essentially just think of the integral as being the area underneath the curve, making it the opposite of what a derivative is. Now that is a definite integral, in which the integral has the two numbers that define the start and end points of the area underneath the curve. Now, now this is the fundamental theorem of calculus, so if, if you're not familiar, f prime of x just means the, the derivative of f. So the integral of f prime of f from a to b is just the, the integral function of f, which is f of x, and it's f of b minus f of a. This is what the two bounds of integration tell you. And likewise, if you take the derivative of the integral, you get the original function. It's like the antiderivative. So yeah, to integrate a function, just do the opposite of what derivatives do. And also, don't forget the plus c, because when you have a function and you take the derivative, you would get rid of a constant, like plus c being any constant. So let's go over some common functions and their integrals. If you have a constant, so this is basically what it means for an integral. The integral of a with respect to x is just ax plus c. The integral of x with respect to x is just x squared over 2 plus c. And like, and, and like you, can, you can see how they're integrals by seeing how if you take the derivative of these functions, you get what's, you get the original. Like, the integral is just the opposite of the derivative. So yeah, it's all of these things. Yada, yada, yada. So, what are some rules of integration that are similar to derivatives? Bruh. Well, there's multiplication by constant, power rule, sum rule, and difference rule. So, essentially, if you have, if you want to take the integral of a, a function multiplying it by a constant, you can just bring the constant out of the integral, like in this one. So, integral of a c times f of x dx is just, you can bring the c out, so c times integral of f of x dx. We have the power rule, which is just the same, which is just the inverse of the, the power rule with derivatives. Um, we also have the sum rule and difference rule, meaning that if you have two functions added together or subtracted from one another, you can just treat them separately. Oh my god! So let's go for a practice problem. Now we want to find the integral of a 6 times x squared dx, and we can first bring the 6 out of this uh, integral because 6 is a constant, so now we get 6 times integral of x squared dx. <laughs> now, um, so it might seem sus, I don't know what might seem sus, but some people would say sus. But as you can see, when you in when you integrate x squared dx, you would just uh, raise the power by 1 to get x cubed, and then over 3 plus c. Oh yeah, and then the 6 and the 3, they cancel out to give you 2x cubed. And there you have it, the answer is 2x cubed plus c. Um, now let's try to integrate this function, integral of cos x plus x dx. Now, the first step you can do is you can split this up into two integrals. So you have integral of cos x dx and also integral of x dx. And now from here, you can you know that the derivative of sin x is cos x, so therefore the integral of cos x is uh, sin x. And then the x becomes x squared over 2. And then don't forget a plus c. So yeah, pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> Got it! No, you. 
No, like, really, I'm talking about no you substitution. Bruh. So, there's no straightforward multiplication or quotient rule when it comes to integrals, because, like, they're integrals. With derivatives, you have a quotient rule, multiplication rule, but with integrals, we can do a u substitution if we could rewrite the function like above, which is the opposite of a tree. Um, something's wrong, I can feel it. Oh wait, <laughs> Where is it? There it is. So essentially, if you have the integral of a function dx, if you could rewrite this function as f of g of x times g prime of x, then you can use no u Bruh. substitution to go from here to the, oh. to the function, like to the integral of the function. So essentially, you would just find u in terms of x, and then write du over dx, and integrate in terms of u, then rewrite u in terms of x. <laughs> so let's do some no u substitution practice. Let's say we have the function cosine x squared times 6x dx. Now, how can we rewrite this function? Well, let's. Uh, let, it seems impossible at first, but like, really, when it comes to no use substitution for integrals, you kind of just have to keep doing practice problems until you get an intuitive idea of how to do it. Like, <laughs> essentially, you just need to keep doing practice problems to and keep practicing with problems like these until you uh, could intuitively determine what the va what the value of u should be. So in this case, let's set u equal to x squared, so therefore du over dx would be equal to 2x. Basically, du over dx is 2x, so therefore you could also write du equals 2x dx. Now with the original expression, let's factor, uh, let, no, not factor, let's bring a 3 out of this integral, because it's like multiplication by constant, so now we have 3 times the integral of cosine x squared to 2x dx, and here we can replace all instances of x with u. Oh yeah, this is very important. In order for a no u substitution to work, you must replace all instances of x with u. That's the only way it could work. So here you have cosine x squared to x dx. Now we could replace x squared with u, so we get cosine u, and then we could replace 2x dx with uh, du. So now we have 3 times cosine u du, meaning that we have 3 times the integral of cosine u with respect to u. And that we can easily integrate, we can just say sine of u, so 3 times sine of u plus c. And now we just gotta bring the u, the value of u back into here, so we replace u with x squared, and now we get 3 sine x squared plus c. And there you have it, that's integral. Now, if you wanna verify that your integral is correct, like if you wanna double check that your integral is correct, what you can do is you can then try to find the derivative of this function, and see that the derivative derivative matches up with the original function. So let's do some more no u substitution. Dank practice. Now let's say you have the, inter the function x over x squared plus 1 dx. So what can we select as the value of u? In this case we can... it might seem confusing, like what, what could we do? Well. It's actually pretty simple, you just gotta set u equal to x squared plus 1, and therefore du would be equal to 2x dx. And now we still, it's still impossible for us to get rid of all instances of x, replacing them with u, so let's um, do, let's uh, morph this function a little bit. Let's multiply 2 inside here, and multiply 1 half outside of the integral. Now the 2 and 1 half will cancel out to 1, so it's still the same uh, integral, but this time we can now, we can now do u substitution. So the 2x dx, this is 2x dx, that gets replaced with du, and then the x squared plus 1, that's just u. So now we have 1 half times integral of 1 over u, du. And that's pretty straightforward, it's just 1 half times natural log of u, plus c. And, oh yeah, now we just need to bring the u back in here, so it's actually 1 half times natural log of x squared plus 1 plus c. And there you have it, nice job. <laughs> so let's talk about integration by parts. 
So when you want to find the integral of f of x dx, then sometimes the no u substitution doesn't work. So basically, um, essentially you should try to find u and v such that f of x dx is equal to u of x times v prime of x. And v prime of x just means the, the derivative of v of x. V of x being a function, v prime of x is the derivative of v of x. <laughs> and you can use this formula to help. So essentially, integral of u dv can be rewritten as u times v minus integral of v du. You might be a little confused as to what I mean, so let me just give you an example. <laughs> Practice 1. So let's say we have the function 2x cos and x dx. Now, we could try to do you no know, u substitution, and if we try to do no u Bruh. substitution, we can like uh, try to experiment around, and that is essentially what you do with no u substitution. You just need to experiment and experiment around with different values of u until you find some value of u that works. But in this case, we couldn't do that. So it seems like we have to do integration by parts. Now, essentially, same thing, you should find a u value and a v value such that this integral is u dv. So I chose to have a 2x being my value for u, so therefore du equals 2dx, and then v equals sine of x, so therefore dv equals cosine x dx. And now we can rewrite this integral as, so you see this, we can, this just becomes the u dv, because u is 2x and then dv is cosine x dx, so this is now u dv, and it could be rewritten as uv minus the integral of v du. <laughs> and uv is just 2x sine x, and the integral of v du, that is just sine x times 2 dx. And there we have it. Oh wait, how do we integrate integral of uh, how do we integrate 2 sine dx? Well, pretty straightforward. We can just do this, I guess. Yeah. So, oh yeah, and now the integral of uh, sine of x is negative cosine of x. So, um, we have two negative signs now, so they cancel out. And bam, there we have it. FBI, open up! Wait a minute! Let's do some practice too with integration by parts. So just like u substitution, when you do integration by parts, you kind of just have to guess and track, and you kind of just have to experiment around with different values of u and v until you find a value that works and value that would allow you to like proceed further. So now we have integral of arc 10x dx. Oh my god! Yeah, I know. It seems like it's just one function, but and now uh, we, we don't know how to find integral of arc 10x dx. Now this video assumes you know how to find the derivative of arc 10. <laughs> like, if you don't know how to find the derivative of arc 10, I don't know, but yeah, this video assumes you know how to find the derivative of arc 10. Anyway, so essentially if you keep experimenting around you would find out that if you set u equal to arc 10x and v equal to x, then this becomes u dv. So integral of arc 10x dx is just u integral of u dv. Uh, now the derivative of arc 10 of x equals 1 over x squared plus 1, so du equals uh, this dx. Um, I'm assuming you already know how to do that. So now this in this integral is written as integral u dv, and we can re we can equate this to u v minus v du. So now u v is just arc 10x uh, times x. And then v du, so integral of v du would just be would just be x times one over x squared plus one dx. So now we have x times arc 10x minus integral of x over x squared plus one dx. Now I think I went over how you can solve the this integral like. I think like 10 minutes ago, I just went over how you can solve the integral of x over x squared plus 1 dx, so you use u substitution and get this. And there you have it, you have the answer. Nice job. Oh my god! Alright, now let's do one final practice of integration by parts. Bum bum bum! This is a tough question on e to the x sine x dx. I wonder how we can solve this integral. Well, 
again, this time let's set u equal to sine x and then v equal to, to e to the x. So now this is again uh, u dv, and uh, this can be equated to uv minus the uh, integral of v du. So uv is sine x e to the x, and then v du is just so minus integral v du is just minus uh, integral e to the x cosine x dx. Now where do we go on from here? Well, essentially we're gonna have to do um, integration by parts again. Yeah, we have to do integration by parts again, I know it's... So now we have integral e to the x sine x, which is this function, e to the x sine x dx is equal to sine x times e to the x minus cosine x e to the x minus integral of e to the x sine x dx. Now remember that u equals cosine of x, so, so basically we're doing integration by parts again. Like here, we already did integration by parts, uh, got these values. Now we're going to do integration by parts again, with u being equal to cosine of x, and v being equal to e to the x. So now this gets uh, this part, um, this part gets rewritten as cosine x e to the x minus integral of negative e to the x sine x dx. Now these two negative signs can cancel out, so we can get this one, um, integral of e to the x sine x dx equals sine x e to the x minus cosine x e to the x minus integral of e to the x sine x dx. Now you might be thinking, where can we go on from here? Like, you might be confused. You might be thinking, like, what can we, what can we even do here? Like, if we do integration by parts again, we're just gonna go on forever and ever and go on an infinite loop. But there's a way out of here. Notice how in this equation, we have uh, integral e to the x sine x dx on both sides. What if we add integral e to the x sine x dx to both sides? So this negative sign, so the, the two, this negative sign, here, this part just just gets disappears. Whee! Right. So now we add this to both sides. And now we get two e integral e to the x sine x dx equals sine x minus cosine x all times e to the x. And now we just divide two from both sides and do a plus c, and there we have it. The answer to the integral of e to the x sine x dx. This may, this may seem pretty hard, but yeah, that's how you do it. It's, it really isn't that hard once you like, get a hang of it, so, yep. <laughs> Anyways, this is it for this video. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, this means you definitely enjoyed it, and this means this video definitely helped. You definitely learned something new, so please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more goofy ah, math. And also hit the bell icon to never miss another upload. This is important. Please hit the bell icon to never miss another upload. Um, you can also hit the like button to show your appreciation uh, that you've become smarter and learned more. And leave a comment telling me what you learned. But anyways, this has been Charlie. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care.